If there is karma, can we prove it? Why good people suffer incurable disease like <laughs> cancer? How can we say it's their karma? This is a very good question. This is a very good question actually. Um, concept of karma is very complicated. And uh, both in Hinduism and Buddhism, uh, people often misuse it. They misuse it as a way of um, excuse. So, for example, in the Indian system, in the Hindu system, the differences between the castes, you know, the Brahmins, the Shastriyas, and the untouchables, this is based on the idea that it is their karma. So they have to accept it. Therefore, society has no responsibility in trying to change this. So often, the concept of karma has been misused to promote and continue a certain you know, injustices and inequality within a given society. And also, sometimes, even in Buddhism, people use karma in a fatalistic sense. It is karma, we cannot do anything. So the idea, you know, that they, you know, when they say this is karma, then they, in other words, they're saying, I give up. This is karma. So this is a very fatalistic idea, and it's again a wrong idea. Because karma does not mean that everything that happens to you. For example, if, um, say, it rains here and all of a sudden there is a leak coming down, it hits your head, is that karma? You know, and a lot of people will say it is. Why it fell on your head and not someone else's head? <laughs> so, here, one has to understand the concept of karma really is an ethical concept, concept of Buddhist morality, where the key purpose of concept of karma is to teach you the concept of responsibility for the consequences of your action. So it should be more directed into the future rather than into the past. See if you can understand. Because if you understand karma purely by looking into the past reasons for what happens to you, then of course it becomes fatalistic. You know, if it is karma, I cannot do anything. But if you understand karma directed more into the future, suggesting that what I do now will have consequences in what happens to me in future, then it is a very powerful and beneficial concept. Because what it does is it teaches you accountability. It teaches you that what you do has consequences. And these consequences, for these consequences, you are responsible. So, if you look at the concept of karma, karma refers to an action of a person. And this action is an intentional action. So, when you create a new karma, it starts with an intention. Say, for example, I want to say something bad mm. to her, okay, because I don't like her. Then that is the intention. And that intention sets in motion a whole chain of events which may result in me actually saying the bad word. Now, the, the, the chain of karma starts with the intention. Intention leads to an action. So that is karma. Karma is an intentional action. And that karma will have consequences. For example, she will be disappointed. Okay? She will dislike me. And then that is an experience I will face. So you can immediately see the, the, the results of karma right there. The immediate result is a creation of an uncomfortable and disequilibrium within yourself and in others, creating pain. So that is an immediate. Then the same karma can have long-term consequences in future, and sometime in rebirth, or maybe sometime in this life. So the karma has really, it's better understood from the point of view of looking into the future rather than into the past. 
Because in any case, what has happened in the past, we wouldn't know. Okay? And one way of, say, for example, the, the exact example you gave of a, a good person, you know, something bad happening to that good person, like this person suffering from cancer. Now, here, from the person's point of view, the patient's point of view, if the patient is a Buddhist, the patient may think, okay, in this life, I cannot recall ever having done anything that is really bad. You know, I, I don't recall ever having done anything that is harmful to others. So whatever is happening to me is not clearly a consequence of what I've done in this life. Since, as a sentient being, I have so many lifetimes in the past, you know, what is happening to me today may have some relation to what I may have done somewhere a long time in the past. So this is a way of cleansing this karma that I've created. Now, if the patient approaches this situation from that kind of perspective, there will be a tremendous sense of relief because the patients would not think, why me? That's the problem. You know, when you start thinking, why me, not others? You experience a sense of unfairness, injustice in what is happening to you. But on the other hand, your conception of your existence goes back into far distance with many lifetimes. Then what has happened in those lifetimes is totally you know, not open to you. And then you accept that what is happening now may be a result of something that has happened in many lifetimes. Then you deal with it. You accept it. You are more open to it. Then furthermore, if you are a, a, you believe in the concept of karma, then you will also understand that by experiencing the suffering, you are cleansing a karma. So, in this sense, the concept of karma is very useful. But where it goes wrong is when a third person, not the patient, a third person says, what he is experiencing now is his own result of his own bad karma. Then it becomes like a blame, blaming the victim. So here you have really have to be careful in the way in which you know, the karma becomes a reason for explaining something. Okay? Because sometimes what happens is that we Buddhists and Hindus also tend to use karma as a shorthand for something that cannot be explained rationally. And that kind of explanation should be avoided as much as possible. But from the point of view of the person who is actually suffering, then the concept of karma can be very helpful. So it's, it's, it's a very complicated concept.